Today's National Prayer Breakfast provides an opportunity to take a look at the gains made in protecting religious freedom in this country and the work needed to protect religious freedom around the world. While exact figures are hard to pin down, it is estimated that more than 8 in 10 people in the world today live where they cannot practice their faith freely. Joining me now is Dee Dee Loggenson. She is Executive Director of Save the Persecuted Christians. Dee Dee, welcome. We appreciate you coming on. Thank you, Tracy. It's good to be here. I know that you were at the breakfast this morning and you also had your own side event. Can you tell us about the breakfast, uh, the feeling there in the room today, and also the event that you hosted? Yes, absolutely. The prayer breakfast every year. This is the 68th annual prayer breakfast, and there are just so many people from all over the world who are there to pray and to get to know one another better. And it was just fabulous. It was especially good to see President Trump uh, on stage this morning after the acquittal yesterday and for him to speak specifically and boldly about the persecution of Christians. We were very encouraged by that. Great. Um, talk about the event that you had. You said you had a side event there today. Yes, yeah, so immediately following the breakfast, our organization, Save the Persecuted Christians, which is a coalition and a grassroots. It's a coalition of nearly 200 civil society, faith, and community leaders who work to raise uh, the information in the United States about the global crisis of Christian persecution, in which 80% of those persecuted for their faith in the world are Christians. So our organization hosted a panel event with Congressman Frank Wolf. Uh, Bob Fu of China Aid, uh, and uh, Secretary Tristan Azbe from Hungary's uh, Secretariat to Aid the Persecuted Christians. It was really a fabulous event, and so many people showed up that we had people standing out in the hallway. Wow. Well, yesterday, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo announced the launch of the International Religious Freedom Alliance. How important do you think that is to have this sort of you know, global cooperation in bringing an end to religious persecution? Yes, well, this administration has done more to protect and defend religious liberty both at home and abroad than any other administration previously. This alliance is the fruit of the U.S. ministerials, which have been hosted now for two years. This alliance uh, is a coalition of countries. I'm told now 26 countries have joined on, and the United States is truly leading the way to uh, defend the right, the human right, of people to express themselves and to worship freely. Dee Dee, can we talk about the role that religion plays in securing peace and stability? Religion is the foundation of a free society. Societies that cherish and uphold the human right to freedom of religion or belief, these societies flourish. Their economies are better, the people are happier, it's good for families, it's just good across the board. Yeah. Didi, quickly, uh, can you talk about uh, some of the maybe look at the religious persecution of Christians around the world and, and what do you think, which country or countries concerns you the most? Yes, we are very, very concerned about what we see as a genocide that is not, uh, not addressed or recognized by the international community in Nigeria. And uh, the, all of the Sahel is being affected by uh, terrorists uh, who are um, mercilessly on a daily basis slaughtering Christians. So we are very concerned about uh, West Africa and what is happening there. You see that the Islamic State has found a new home in these vast ungoverned territories. So Burkina Faso and Mali and Chad and Nigeria are all being hit very hard. And I really do hope that Americans will plug in and, and come behind them like we did in, in the Sudan, uh, we are pushing for the appointment of a U.S. special envoy to Nigeria and the Lake Chad region. We're also very concerned about what's happening in China and with the new enforcement of the religious uh, restrictions that have gone into place just this month. Uh, the house churches are terribly oppressed. Well, Didi, thank you so much for coming on. We really appreciate you coming on and, and sharing your knowledge and your insight with us. Thank you for having me. 
That's Dee Dee Langison, Executive Director of Save the Persecuted Christians. Again, thank you, Dee Dee.